segments in their initial quality survey. Seven of our vehicles were named top safety picks by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety this year. And Forbes recently named six of our vehicles to its top 12 list of cars with the best reliability and ownership cost in the industry. Now looking ahead, we expect our industry to continue its steady, modest path to recovery. You may recall that just a few months ago, industry analysts were very optimistic for a strong sales recovery this year. Maybe they were a little bit too optimistic. Some said the industry would reach over 12 to 13 million units by the end of the year. Well, the, the truth is, the industry is on the men, but the economic recovery is much slower than many forecasted earlier this year. The good news is that the job market, personal consumption, capital spending, and residential investment are inching up. The bad news is, is that lingering high unemployment, the erratic stock uh, prices are restraining consumer confidence and spending and that impacts auto sales. Our forecast for the industry sales this year is to reach somewhere between 11.2 and 11.5 million vehicles. That'll be an improvement over 2009, but still well below our peak levels of 17 million just a few years ago. And we continue to be bullish on the long-term prognosis for the auto industry due to the nation's aging fleet high scrappage rates, and a strong U.S. population growth. We believe all of these factors are increasing the pressure for consumers to buy a new car. So it's not a matter of if, it's really when. Now, we're aiming to stay ahead of this rising demand by continuing to invest in the future. We're spending nearly $1 million an hour on average on research and development. We are committed to maintaining our environmental leadership position, developing technologies that serve our customers and the environment. The Toyota Prius is really an excellent example of that commitment. It's been on sale here in the U.S. for over 10 years now, and it continues to be the leading hybrid with nearly 900,000 customers. Nearly seven out of 10 hybrid vehicles in America today were built by Toyota. And one out of every two is a Prius. We estimate that our hybrids in the US have led to 13 million fewer tons of CO2 emissions alone. We believe the market for hybrid technology will continue to grow. In fact, we expect our to sell one million gas electric hybrids per year on a worldwide basis this decade. We're also developing a new generation of vehicles, including Prius plug-in hybrid. We're putting 150 into demonstration projects around the country this year, and we plan to begin sales to the public in 2012. Plus, we will offer a battery electric vehicle in 2012, and we plan to sell a zero emission hydrogen fuel cell vehicle in 2015. Our U.S. and North American operations are playing a greater role in all of these efforts. To date, our U.S. investment totals more than $18 billion. Our annual purchasing of parts, components, goods, and services is more than $22 billion. And we continue to localize our management team. We now have nine North American leaders serving as presidents of our manufacturing plants here in the US, Canada, and Mexico, providing more regional autonomy. And soon, we're planning to build another plant and bring that up to speed. In June, we announced that we will resume construction of our newest manufacturing facility in Mississippi. The $1 billion plant will build 150,000 Corollas a year, create nearly 4,000 jobs, 
and be our 10th plant in the United States. Along with creating jobs and driving economic opportunities, Toyota plays a vital role in charity work in local communities and around the country. We believe strongly in giving back. And we have contributed nearly a half a billion dollars to support education, literacy, the environment, and other vital community efforts. In addition, our associates nationwide donate more than 100,000 volunteer hours of their own time to these worthy causes around the country. You can see that strong commitment right here in Washington, D.C., where we have contributed nearly $17 million to a number of local worthy organizations, including Ballou Senior High School in Southeast Washington, where Toyota is funding the Automotive Training Center, and the Boys and Girls Clubs of Metropolitan Baltimore, where Toyota provided funding for much needed career enrichment, arts, and sports programs. Toyota also gives on the national level, including a $5 million grant and 23 Toyota vehicles to the National Park Foundation and $20 million to the National Audubon Society. We are proud to be associated with these groups and we look forward to supporting their good work in the years to come. Now at the beginning of my remarks today, I posed two key questions. How have we changed as a company? And how will we regain the trust of our customers and communities? The answer to both is a, through a lot of hard work and sincere effort. All of us at Toyota pledge with all of our hearts to do just that. I hope that you will follow our progress and help keep us on track. Finally, in hopes that it may help you in your endeavors, let me leave you with three important lessons from our experiences. First, you cannot, you cannot over communicate. We admit that we came up short in our communications to our customers, to the government, and to our own family of associates and dealers. And we're taking steps to improve that. Second, to the outside world, there is only one Toyota. Internally, I'll admit that that hasn't always been the case. I think at times we were guilty of viewing our company as a collection of different business entities. Today, we're doing a better job of aligning our organization to serve our customers and stakeholders more efficiently and effectively. And third, and this is most important, there is no such thing as knowing your customer too well. Toyota has a long history of understanding our customers, and I would argue that we do that as well as anyone. We place a high value on what we call Genji Gimbutsu, or go and see. I think we lost focus and understanding how our customers were using our vehicles and we intend to do a much better job of that in the future. I'm confident that we are taking these lessons to heart. And despite all that's happened, we believe that there is a strong case to be made for Toyota. Our dealers are working overtime to finish off the recall repairs, and they are impressing their customers with their service. Our retail sales lead in the industry despite the state of the economy and the events of the past year is impressive. We're preparing some new products to help take advantage of the recovering economy. And we have our eyes on the future as we ready a new group of environmental vehicles for tomorrow. So all in all, we're in a pretty good place right now. And while we're proud of our progress, 
we recognize there is still much work to be done and we will not stop. <coughs> At Toyota, there is no best, only better. And that focus will never change. I'd like to thank you for your time and attention this afternoon. And now I will be happy to answer some of your questions. So thank you. Yes, good afternoon. Hi, Jim. I'm Neil Rowland with Automotive News. Good afternoon, um, Neil. Do you expect to be fined again by NHTSA for late reporting of safety defects? You know, Neil, I, I can't speak for NHTSA. Um, uh, we, we, we're, we're going to do our best effort uh, to improve, and we've been working to improve our communications with NHTSA. Um, I can't speak to the fine, uh, but uh, we've been working to increase our transparency. If there's a fine forthcoming, we'll, uh, we'll deal with it at that time. Are you in any discussions with NHTSA related to a fine? Uh, we're working to increase our communications with NHTSA. If there's a fine forthcoming, we'll, we'll work with NHTSA as we did in the past. Okay, don't hesitate to over-communicate on that issue. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Neil. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, kind of off topic, but interested in your relationship with uh, Tesla Motors. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. Um, there's been some announcements about that partnership, and it seems like with your hybrid technology and theirs, there could be some great things in the future. Uh, talk about the RAV4 recently. What, so can you talk a little bit about that and maybe some upcoming uh, products, that sort of thing? Sure. Um, I got to tell you, we're ex we're excited about uh, we're excited about that partnership. Um, our work is ongoing at this point in time, but, but uh, we're trying to make sure that we are, uh, in, in terms of our strategy, in terms of new products, we're looking and prepared for any new emerging technologies that, that, that come forth and, and that also that, that consumers are going to uh, accept and use. So uh, I think our partnership with Tesla is great. Uh, we'll wait to see what emerges uh, from, from that partnership, but we are excited. The president of our company, Akio Toyota, certainly uh, was very excited about the, the relationship with Tesla. Uh, we'll wait to see what emerges. <coughs> to, to, uh, <clears throat> you talked a lot about, about uh, where you're going uh, going forward. To what do you attribute the missteps that led to what happened in the past year? Can I ask you just be a little bit more specific because I want to make sure well, I'm answering. Someone, someone said that you know uh, some uh, quality issues or or, or uh, even even communication with the customers uh, was a byproduct of, of Toyota growing too fast. Uh, that that may be one explanation. What do you, what do you say? Well, I think when you when you look at the way our company has grown, I mean we we have grown really from customer demand. Um, we have done a tremendous job of building our business, and we've, we've, we've done that here in the U.S. by building a strong passenger car business. As we moved into other segments, our, our business really grew from our expansion into to, uh, pickup trucks and SUVs. And if you look at the segment where we, um, we entered automobiles and the segment developed and the customer demand developed, I think the, the growth was a result of that. Did it happen too quickly? Eh, tough for me to answer, did it happen too quickly? But I think it, we, we looked at it as a company of, of, of trying to service customer demand, not driving from Toyota's perspective, trying to drive that growth. Where do you stand now on all these uh, lawsuits for alleged sudden acceleration? And does that continue as these things come to Court, does that continue to hurt the reputation, or what's your, what's your assessment of that? Uh, well, I think it's hard to evaluate what the, how, how the lawsuits will um, impact our, our, 
our reputation. But in terms of how, how we're 